The James Webb Space Telescope is the next step for astronomy. This massive 6 meter space telescope is about 3 times the size of the Hubble Space Telescope and will observe exclusively in infrared light. JWST will give us unprecedented new insights into the atmospheres of exoplanets orbiting distant stars, and indeed the very first stars and galaxies that formed in our universe. All of this incredible science doesn't come cheap though, since JWST is estimated to have cost $10 billion to build. It may be pretty expensive, but the incredible instruments on board the JWST will allow us to pair right back to the earliest stages of our universe. So JWST is due to launch next year, but this last week, something perhaps equally as exciting for the astronomy community happened. It was the first time astronomers could apply to use JWST for their science. This meant that thousands of astronomers from around the world, including myself, submitted proposals to use JWST to do science that they have only dreamed possible until now. So in this video we're going to go through the process of how you apply to use a $10 billion space telescope. Generally for all telescopes, but especially big space telescopes, if you want to use them you need to submit a proposal. These proposals will be judged and telescope time will only be awarded to the very best proposals. Each proposal needs to clearly explain the science you want to do, and of course why that science is important. It also needs to show that the telescope and instruments can actually do the science that you proposed. But since JWST hasn't observed anything yet, how is it possible to know what it can or can't do? The answer here is simulations. For years, hundreds of people at NASA, the Space Telescope Science Institute, Northrop Grumman, and Ball Aerospace and Technologies have been characterizing the telescope and its instruments through extensive tests. They covered everything, including characterizing the noise in the detectors, the efficiency of the telescope, the accuracy in its pointing, and the diffuse infrared background of space that will be present in every observation JWST takes. Each piece of information comes together through sophisticated computer programming to simulate almost exactly what JWST observations will look like. This incredible simulated telescope is turned into something called an exposure time calculator. This calculator forms the backbone for people testing if JWST can do the science they want. The exposure time calculator is pretty amazing, so let's take a look at it. We can access it online and simulate whatever target we want to look at. For this example, let's see what kind of spectrum we would expect JWST to observe for a Type 1a supernova, 85 billion light years away from us. This is so far that the optical light that we could see with our eyes has been stretched or redshifted into the infrared light that JWST can observe. To do the simulation, first we upload a spectrum of what we would expect a supernova at 85 billion light years away from us to look like. Next we select the JWST instrument we want to observe with. In this case we'll choose NASPEC, which is a spectrograph. So it will measure the infrared rainbow of light that falls onto JWST. We pick the setup and the amount of time we want to observe the simulated supernova for, then it calculates. Here we can see the simulated spectrum observed by a simulated JWST. This plot tells us how much light JWST observed at each wavelength. We can also look here to see the signal to noise ratio of the observation. This is super helpful because in all science, for an observation to be trustworthy, you need the signal or the light you observe from your target to be much brighter than the random noise of the instrument. For my science, a signal to noise ratio of 5 is okay, so we're looking pretty good here. So it seems reasonable that JWST and the NASPEC instrument could observe a Type 1a supernova spectrum 85 billion light years away from us. Now this is 
incredibly awesome because it's almost twice as far away from us as the furthest Type 1a supernova we've ever observed with the Hubble Space Telescope. So clearly JWST can do a lot of cool stuff. So even though JWST hasn't even observed anything yet, with this incredible software, thanks to the work of hundreds of people, we have a really good idea of what JWST is capable of. Okay, so once your science justification is done and you know exactly what you need for JWST to enable your science, the last big thing you need to do is see how much time your observations need on the telescope. With every telescope, and especially a $10 billion telescope, time is valuable, so the amount of time your science takes is extremely important. If you want a lot of time, then you need to have an exceptional proposal with an exceptional science goal. Earlier on with the exposure time calculator, we could calculate how long JWST would need to observe the supernova to get the data we wanted. But this doesn't account for all the time taken. Time for space telescopes is split between science time and overheads. The overheads contain everything from how long it would take for JWST to reposition and look at your target to how long it takes the detectors to set up and record their information. All of these things can actually turn out to be larger than the amount of science time you are actually observing something, say like our supernova. It may seem like bad design, but the reality is pointing an enormous telescope accurately in space is tricky. So if the science time isn't the total time you need to include in your proposal, then how do you calculate the total time? Well again, we have some pretty cool, albeit old, software to do this for us. This tool called the Astronomer's Proposal Tool, or APT, handles all the timing. You enter the coordinates of your target you want to observe, in this case I've just entered a random point in the sky, and then you set up your observations. Let's say to observe a Type 1a supernova 80 billion light years away from us, we want to take a spectra with near spec four times each 80 days apart from one another. So you go through and enter all the details for each observation, and then you click this magic button here, Run Smart Accounting. Once clicked, the program will calculate all the time that's needed for our observation of a distant supernova. And just like that, we have our imaginary schedule to observe our imaginary supernova. In total, we have 8 hours of science time, but we need 14.6 hours in total. So in this case, the overhead is almost as long as the time we actually are observing the supernova for. It doesn't seem great, but this is the nature of JWST. The science is impressive, but so too are the overheads. This was the process that myself and thousands of other astronomers worked through this last week to try our luck at getting time on the $10 billion telescope. Hopefully my group ends up getting something that we applied for, but I'm sure everything that is selected will push the boundaries of our understanding and put JWST through its paces. So with all that done, astronomers now wait to see the outcomes and desperately hope that JWST doesn't blow up on the launch pad or fail to deploy correctly. It's exciting that we're getting so close to the next step in astronomy and I can't wait to see what we discover. But that's it for this video and your brief look into the inner workings of astronomy. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions or want to talk about JWST, please leave a comment down below. I always try to read them. But until next time, thanks for watching.